autumn prepper again, I wanted to, um, one of the things I didn't touch on, when do you know the hair is ready to harvest? If you're going to clip your rabbit down, you're going to want about three inches of hair, about three inches. Um, you know, I, I know people who've done it shorter, but you want about three inches of hair for spinning. Um, and if you're going to sell it, you still want about three inches of hair. If you are, the other process of, like I said, right now I've been brushing and combing her out, and that's why her, remember if you go back and look at my video, she was super fluffy. Because I brush and comb her every week, she's never going to be that fluffy, because like I said, I'm technically removing that hair that would get very, very long on her. The other method is called pulling. And that is when you would take the hair and you would pinch a little and pull. I'm not doing it very well because normally you would keep one hand on the rabbit while you're yanking hair out, but pulling. And some people, I watched, I was at a, a fiber festival. I watched this one woman literally pull a rabbit like this out, like pull the hair out. The rabbit was not in pain. She was only harvesting like the long hair. And when she got through, the rabbit uniformly had about an inch of hair left underneath, which is, again, rolling the coat because... If you roll the coat, there's always going to be different stages of hair length. You're going to have the hair, let's say, the hair that I'm moving, removing now is going to grow back in, start growing back in. So you're never going to have a naked bunny. Um, and then the other is to, you know, clip it with scissors. Uh, I, the, the thought of that petrifies me because rabbit skin is just so um, uh, uh, thin and... Uh, and, you know, honestly, a lot of times you'll clip a top layer but not clip all the way down to the skin or all the way down to blood. Um, now, Mel, this is for you. I know that you only have a pet trimmer, and your pet trimmer actually, the blade in your trimmer actually doesn't go back and forth like a professional trimmer. It vibrates, and it may not cut your Angora's hair, and you have to be very careful because the tines, which is the spacing between your clipper right here, can get, you can get skin stuck in there and give them quite a little nick. So you have to be very careful. Um, you know, truthfully, I, uh, I would normally tell people, you know, get the comb underneath that mat and try and, you know, and try and, you know, figure out skin from fur and see if that will help. Or, you know, if you're really, really daring, you need a good pair of scissors and, uh, you know, try and clip away at it. One of the things you try to avoid is what they call making second cuts. Like when I shear an alpaca for somebody or I shear a, a llama or even a sheep, um, you want to try and get the bulk of the hair in one cut. And uh, because the seconds get stuck um, when, you're, when, when the fiber is being manufactured, when it's being uh, processed, the seconds cause all sorts of issues. It gets all over. Um, I, I guess the truth is it affects the quality of the fiber. And like I said, not being a, an avid spinner yet, I, uh, you know, I can't attest to what it really does to the fiber. I just know that avid spinners do not like seconds, you know, in their wool. So if you're doing it for yourself, I guess you pick around it or whatever. But if you're doing it for somebody else, you want to try and avoid that and take it from there. That's her butt. This is her butt. Uh, all right, that's about it for now. Maybe I'll just give you a little quick update. I don't have a name for the blue one, so or black one. And if anybody comes up with a cute name, just feel free to post it. All right, folks.